In this one, we're gonna be playing around with async IO with some of the basics. This is where the repo is. And the purpose of this is to understand a little bit about doing asynchronous programming with Python. Um, we'll discover this more and more, but I, I definitely wanna do some more things in this vein of playing with async IO. So please let us know in the comments if you wanna see more stuff like this. I definitely have a few things already planned for this, so make sure you go to joincfe.com slash YouTube. That of course is our YouTube channel. We'll be posting stuff there for it, and um, I will recommend that you you know subscribe and hit the little bell icon um, to make sure that you get everything. All right, so what is async IO? Now, if you go to the docs, let's just go to the docs, we see that it's a module providing infrastructure for writing single threaded concurrent code using coroutines and blah, blah, blah. Um, so basically when you write Python code, what happens is things happen sequentially, right? So they happen in order. What asynchronous programming allows you to do is, is kind of break up that order so it doesn't necessarily happen in order. Um, it's pretty cool. So you're gonna have to like really play around with it a lot more and, and there it does get kind of complex. So that's why I wanna do some basic examples on how it works. This one is just a absolute basic example about just rendering loops and printing out the time it takes for these loops. And I wanna have you actually play around with it as much as possible too. So running this code with me is I think the best way to do this. Now I already have a virtual environment set up. I already have some requirements installed too. Um, and I'm using Python version 3.6. So Python 3.6 is probably the best version to use for this. Um, it probably works with older versions of Python, but I don't recommend it. So check out our YouTube channel for more installation stuff there. Um, and I do plan on doing a lot more stuff related to this on joincfe.com slash courses. We will have a web scraping course that is all about using async IO. Although I do plan on having some async IO web scraping on YouTube as well. All right. So without further ado, let's, let's just do some basic things in Python first, some, some synchronous things, things that happen sequentially or thing after thing, we're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna run some asynchronous code with a very similar sort of method, all right? So let's go ahead and import two libraries. We'll import time, and we'll import random. And I'm gonna do define, um, so this is just some random method, and it's going to synchronously run. So I'm just gonna call it sync run, and we'll just give it a name. So we're gonna pass in an argument for this name. And what I wanna do here is just get a random um, int and I'll just say random dot rand int. And it's gonna be between 50,000 and like some ridiculous big number here, right? So let's see, this is 54,304,231. So I'm getting a number between there and I'm going to loop through it. So I'll say for i in range zero to this random integer. And really I'm just gonna pass, right? So I just wanted to run this loop and then I wanna actually collect the time for it or I wanna print out what that time is for the number of iterations that are actually there. So I'll just go ahead and do start time equals to time dot time. And then after this loop, we'll do elapsed time equals to time dot time minus the start time. Okay, and then all we're gonna do here is just print out um, with a string substitution name with the, you know, whatever number of iterations here, iterations, and it took some elapsed time here, seconds. Cool, and then 
Now I wanna actually run through this. So I'm gonna run through this using just a standard for loop. So I'll just go ahead and say run the sync run. And I'll go ahead and say for i in range. This one doesn't have to be random. I'm just gonna do 10 iterations. So basically 10 times of running this sync run, which in itself has some loop. Um, so so basically what I'm, I'm kind of pretending that's happening here is a certain amount of time elapsing based off of these iterations. So like if I have this big number and I run a for loop for it, there's gonna be time that actually takes up to have it run, to actually elapse it. So that means that I'm gonna just go ahead and do name F and we'll just say iteration is whatever the IF iteration is or the you know, the, the, the actual iteration in this range that's gonna give me the name of that I'm, what I'm running. And then I'll just run sync run of that name that we just created. And then I'll just go ahead and, well, let's return that same start time and elapse time thing. And I'll go ahead and print that out as a part of this function as well. Okay, and here we go. And again, I'll print this out. Um, this time we don't need the name or the random int. I'll just say this loop took however many seconds. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and run that, uh, save it and jump into my terminal and then into my SRC folder where my play file is. So Python play.py is what I called it. You don't have to call it that. Oops, I get O is not fine. That should be zero, not O. Little typo there, sorry about that. Okay, so it runs and it's it's literally just going through iterations with, with some random number, right? And it's going step by step, it's doing everything sequentially. Um, so this is cool. This actually builds what sort of thing you might see. Now, of course, it's not gonna be with some random number. Maybe it's actually going to a web page. Maybe it's grabbing some other data, but something's happening in here that would be processing everything that we're doing, right? Um, so I'm gonna now go ahead and comment that out. And now let's turn it into async IO sort of code. So we're gonna import async IO, just like that. And this is a built-in library to Python 3.6. So you don't have to install it. I did mention that I have some other requirements installed, uh, but I don't need to do any of these things, just to keep that in mind. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this sync run thing here. Um, and this time I'm gonna just go ahead and put this print statement, instead of being just a print statement, I'll give it into a message. So I'll say message equals to this, and I'll still print it out, and then I'll return it. Okay. So name with iteration took all that stuff's the same. So to make this what's called a coroutine, we add async in front of this. So now it's a coroutine. So doing something like sync run with, you know, random name, uh, this is actually not running it. This won't run it. Um, you have to do something else. You would, you would have to do yield from, oops, yield from that. Uh, but actually that probably won't even work. I'll, I'll explain how this works in a little bit. So notice it says yield outside of a function. Um, so when we start to use asynchronous code, we need to put it inside of a loop. Now the async IO has this thing called an event loop that allows us to run our code, which is what we still need to do. So yield from is a way to call asynchronous code in synchronous code. And it's, it's like running from a generator too, if you know about those things. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that just yet. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna completely ignore yield from, I just wanna mention it, um, that you can't just run sync run. Let's, let's just try sync run as well and say ABC, whatever, and run it. And coroutine sync run was never awaited. Well, let's try await, right? So await sync run, invalid syntax. So it's not just letting you run this function anywhere. Right, so that's that's part of async.io. You'll see this when you're working with async.io. You'll see this async here, 
and you have to realize it runs on this event loop. So we still have to make that event loop, but before we do, I wanna have this, this run the sync run thing. Um, but I'm gonna call it something just a little bit different. Um, instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it tasks. So I'll go ahead and say tasks, and we're gonna put this equal to an empty list. And we'll do for i in range zero to 10. And we're gonna give it a name, so the same name. So this, this is roughly the same as up here, right? So we can give that same name here. And we'll call this async iteration. And now what we do is tasks.append. And now what we have to do is use something called ensure feature, or excuse me, ensure future. So async io dot ensure future. Then we've got this, well, we've been calling it sync run because we copied and pasted it, but I'm gonna call this async run now. Ensure future of async run of this name. Okay. So this is preparing much like this was preparing to actually be ran, right? So I actually had to run the function to prepare it. So I can also call this define um, compile async tasks. And let's tab this in. And then we'll return tasks. Now there's a good chance you probably wouldn't end up doing something like this. Instead, you would probably have it out um, you, you probably don't need to have it inside of this async function. But what I will do is just say tasks equals to that compile async tasks like that. Okay. And now we need to actually run our loop. So I do loop dot, or excuse me, loop equals to async io dot get event loop. And since we want to run a loop, we're also gonna go ahead and close it to make sure that it closes. So we open it and close it. Um, so this is this is running our asynchronous program essentially is, is going like this. And then inside of here, we can run various things in this loop. So this loop would run forever if we don't close it. Um, and it allows us to run our asynchronous code because it doesn't happen necessarily sequentially. We have to declare when we want to run it. Right, so like I can't just call async run. I can't just call that. It's not gonna do anything. So what I have to call is something called run until complete. So loop dot run until complete. And now it's async io dot gather. And we gather the list, list of tasks. So we use that star to make sure that that, that is executed because we we actually appended all these different things. So if you want to see what those tasks look like, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So we see that it's not actually these methods being ran or even anything being ran for that matter. Okay, so this will actually run the thing as we've seen before. So it'll run it very similar to run the, run the sync run. Um, but instead what it's doing is it's doing it using async IO. So another thing I will actually have is I'm going to add a print time in front of the loop as well as an elapsed time at the end of the loop. And we'll call this async loop took however many seconds. Okay, so we save it and we run it. And we have an empty list here, but we, we do have our iterations coming through. So that empty list Oh, I know why, because I printed the tasks right there, not after I ran through the iterations. So let's try that again with the list being there. Okay, so if we see here, these are those pending coroutines. That means they haven't been ran yet, right? So these are turning this into using that argument. This allows me to use that argument um, and it allows me to do it when I'm gonna run it in the future. And then I compile all these things I'm gonna run in the future in this list called tasks and then I run asyncio.gather, and then it's gonna run all of those tasks. And that's what it does. So it actually ran all of the tasks, and it did it using asynchronous or asyncio. Um, 
So did it take advantage of all the things that async does? No, not necessarily. But what I wanted to do is show you how to actually run some async code before you do anything else, right? So there's another portion of this that we're not gonna cover just yet, um, but basically what you do is you can actually call something that is asynchronous. So when I set a web page, I could call, let's, let's just do a mock example without doing it. We'll say, uh, let's say fetch URL, so some URL, and then we'll return something. Right, so in here we would actually do a real request, right? And what you could do then is call inside of your coroutine, you could call something called await and that fetched URL, whatever that URL is, and you can set that equal to some, some response or something like this, where then what it's gonna do is when it's running this stuff, it would actually call this fetch URL wait for it to finish. Once it's finished, the rest of the code will execute and it does it in a more efficient way than if you were doing it using synchronous code. And the other benefit of this is then I would also be able to run multiple ways of doing this fetch URL almost at the same time. That's something else that's really, really cool about async IO is, is, it, is it does these things together. That's why they're called coroutines. They can be ran together and what's called asynchronously, so they're not necessarily happening sequentially. So that means that we have these several iterations, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. If we were to do other sorts of requests in any individual iteration, that iteration might finish after one that was called after it, right? So it's not necessarily first in, first out. It might be, it might work out that way, but it also might not be depending on what the request is or what's going on with your actual async function or method. So if you have any questions on this, let me know. I'm super interested in async IO because I think there's a lot of cool things that we can start to do with Python and async IO allows those things to happen. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.